Hello everyone and welcome back into another Genshin Impact video. If I'm looking so softly, it's because I don't want to wake Layla up. Um, oh well, that didn't work. Uh, but yeah, since she's already awake, let's start with the guide. Alright, Layla, she builds a cryovision, she is a sword user, and her build usually focuses mostly on HP and some energy recharge. You do not need this much, you're gonna be fine with 130, 140, maybe 150, whatever, it's gonna be probably more than enough. Moving on to her talents. Starting with her normal attacks, it's a combo of three strikes, they won't deal that much damage, and her charge attacks are kind of the same. Um, you're not gonna use these attacks a lot during her like rotation and this is how they look they are quite cool to look at like these are the normal attacks as you can see there's like a little star at the end which is very very cute and adorable and the charge attack is the usual double slash we have seen that multiple times in other characters so nothing crazy there then we have her elemental skill, Knights of Formal Focus, which will create this shield around her called Curtain of Slumber, which is based on her max HP. It can absorb any kind of damage, but it's more effective against Cryo, so keep that in mind. Whenever you cast the ability, it will also apply Cryo for a brief moment on Layla, which means she can clear herself from effects like Electro or Pyro. After creating the shield, a nice star will be created every 1.5 seconds, and whenever you get 4 of these stars, they will start attacking enemies, just homing onto them, and deal a bit of cryo damage. You can also gain nice stars by casting elemental skill, they won't deal that much damage, so keep that in mind. And whenever your shield duration expires, you will lose all the nice stars you had, or continue firing the ones you already had until the wave just ends. A skill damage is the damage that you will deal whenever you cast the ability. Uh, the shooting star's damage is of course the nice star damage, which is based on her attack, so they won't deal that much damage. And the shield, as we said before, it's based on her max HP. It will absorb a lot of damage actually, it's probably one of the best shields in the game. And the duration is basically the same as cooldown, so you can have the shield active at all times, which is amazing. So this is how the shield looks like whenever you press the elemental skill. You will have this shield around you, it will deal damage if the enemies are really really close to you, so it's really hard to see that. And whenever you have 4 stars, they will start homing onto enemies, you can see they are regenerating. Um, yeah, you better swap to other characters to use their elemental skill, so that way you have more of that night stars generating, which means you will deal a little bit more damage. As you can see here, I did some damage because I was very very close to the enemy, and yeah, the shield will take a lot of hits actually. And finally we have the Dream of the Star Stream Shaker, which is her elemental burst. And this will create this domain around her that will continually fire these starlight slugs that will deal cryo damage. And whenever this slug hit an opponent, they will also regenerate a nice star for you. This time the damage of the slug is based on her max HP, which means she will now deal some damage. The duration as with the shield is 12 seconds and the cooldown is also 12, so you can have this skill always active, which means she's really good in rotations. And the energy cost is also really low at just 40. And this is how her elemental burst looks like. You will cast this uh, thing, which is very, very cool. Uh, the AoE is very big, actually. It's, um, I think it's the same as Ganyu's, uh, but not super sure about that. As you can see, it did deal some damage. It wasn't that much, but you can keep freezing enemies quite easily if you're also using a Hydro character in your team. And as we said before, it also interacts with your shield, generating some nice stars, which in the end will apply more cryo. So yeah, there's some synergy in there. Then we have her first passive talent, like Nascent Light, which basically whenever you generate one nice star, the shield strength of your Curtain of Slumber, which is your elemental skill, will be increased by 6%, up to 4 stacks, which means up to 24%, which is uh, actually a lot. The second passive talent is called Sweet Slumber Undisturbed, which increases the damage of her nice stars by 1.5% of her max HP, which means they will now deal some damage at least. And finally, her special passive talent is Shadowy Dream Signs, which basically allows her to have a 10% chance to receive double products whenever she crafts character talent materials. Uh, 
it's the talent that we already had in the game, but it's nice having it on more characters. Moving on to her constellations, we have her constellation 1, which increases her shield absorption by 20%, and also whenever you unleash your elemental skill, you will also create a shield for your allies, which also works in co-op. This shield will have a 35% uh, damage absorption from your original shield, will also last 12 seconds and will also absorb crowd damage more effectively. Her constellation 2 allows her to gain 1 energy per enemy hit by her night stars. This can only trigger once per night star, uh, but you can have as many nice stars as you want. Her constellation 3 increases the level of her elemental skill by 3 levels. Her constellation 4 is more interesting because it will allow your active character to deal more damage with his normal and charge attack based on 5% of Lila's max HP whenever they are under the effect of the shield. This effect will last for 3 seconds and it will be removed after 0.05 seconds after a normal attack or charge attack that deals damage. So you have to continue doing normal or charge attacks at least once every 3 seconds to maintain the buff active, but it's a Quite huge buff if you consider how much HP Layla can have. Constellation 5 increases her elemental burst level by 3. And finally we have her Constellation 6, which increases her shooting stars and also the Starlight Slug's damage by 40%, which is a very huge buff, and also reduces the cooldown at which these things will be fired by 20%, so uh, they will basically deal more damage more often, so it's a very good Constellation, and that means that you can also apply more Cryo which is also really good. We have a couple of 5 star options that I do not own, which are the Primordial Jade Cutter and also the Key of Kaj Nisut. These are the only two 5 star weapons that I suggest using on her, and that's mostly because they are the only weapons that I can think of that also increase your HP. Primordial Jade Cutter increases your HP by 20% thanks to the passive and will also provide the attack bonus based on your max HP. And the Key of Kaj Nisut will increase your HP as a substat and also give you 20% more HP uh, thanks to the passive. It does also increase your elemental mastery uh, based on your max HP, but that's not important, um, while also increasing the elemental mastery of your party members by a percentage of your max HP, which is actually useful. You could use the Skyward Blade if you have this one, it does give you a lot of energy recharge, but as we saw, she doesn't need energy recharge that much, because her burst costs only 40 energy, so it's very easy to achieve, and also the passive, it's really not that useful for her, so yeah, just, I guess, don't use this weapon. Moving on to the 4 star weapons, uh, here as well there are not that many options, I either suggest using the Favonius Ward just for the energy recharge, if you don't have any energy recharge on your build, um, or I, I guess the Cinnabar Spindle because it looks good, even though the passive and everything doesn't really affect her that much, uh, but that's about it with weapons, there's like not a very good option for her in the game yet, so we're gonna wait for a weapon to give her, I guess, because uh, yeah, there's no weapon that has HP as a subset apart from the Pfizer weapon. Uh, yeah, it's it's a very weird, weird character in that case. Like, there's literally no weapon that fits her in a very good way. Um, moving on to artifacts, I guess. And with artifacts, we do have a couple of options. We have, of course, the Tenacity of the Middleit, which increases your HP by 20% with the 2-piece set, while the 4-piece set increases your party's attack by 20% and the shield strength by 30% whenever your elemental skill deals damage to enemies. The duration of the buffs is 3 seconds at base and can be refreshed every 0.5 seconds, so it's quite easy to keep up with uh, how her elemental skill works and the uh, shooting stars. So, very good set overall, if you want to go for the 4-piece set, it's recommended. You can also have 2-piece Tenacity of the Middleit and 2-piece Emblem of Severed Fate to gain some energy research if you don't have any energy research at all on your build. And finally, you can use the Noblesse Oblige set, which increases your elemental burst damage by 20%, and the 4-piece set will increase your party's damage by 20% for 12 seconds. And since the cooldown on her burst is 12 seconds, uh, this buff will be always active if you keep rotating Layla in and out of your rotation. So. Those are my artifacts recommendations, they are all good. 
As for your substats and main stats, you want to focus mostly on HP, energy recharge will be fine, other stats are whatever, like crit rate, crit damage, attack, that's like whatever, just try to get HP and energy recharge, and that's basically it, just that's what you have to focus on. Alright, and that's Layla, I have nothing to showcase really, cause she doesn't bring anything to the party, that's what's kinda sad about this character. The only way you can get something out of her is from her constellation 4, that increases the damage of your normal attacks and charge attacks, but apart from that, uh, she's just a cute character and she has a shield. But like every other shielder in the game is gonna be better than her in some way or another. She kinda reminds me of Thoma but Cryo, and that's not a great thing. Because Thoma is just a big shield with nothing else unless you have a constellation, so yeah, that's that's Layla. A very, very sad character design. Uh, on a really, really cute character, I guess, but eh, whatever. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and remember to like and subscribe if you want more guides. Also, if you have any suggestions on how to build or play Layla, I am open to any suggestions actually because I want, really want to try this character out, so if you have any idea just let me know in the comments below and have a great rest of the day, see you in the next one, bye bye With frogs, cold night and the winter hot gold Sorry that I fall away sometimes Sorry that I fall away sometimes Yeah, yeah to end it all on the weekend Sorry that I feel that way sometimes Sorry that I feel that way sometimes